welcome to Full Frontal. Any filibuster fans in the house? Yeah. Woo! Now, if you are like me and my staff, nerdy, you binge watched all 15 hours of Fear the Talking Dems. <laughs> 40 Democrats stood to argue for gun control, and it was pretty damn exciting, especially for C-SPAN, which got its highest rating since the Book Notes After Dark episode where <laughs> Doris Kearns Goodwin read aloud from her tender presidential erotica. <laughs> but Senate Republicans were not impressed. Yesterday, we saw a political show on the Senate floor. This is not a gun control issue. This is a terrorism issue. And it is nothing less than political gamesmanship for them to try to shift for their favorite hobby horse of taking away the Bill of Rights from law-abiding citizens. Oh, knock it off, you <laughs> rodent-faced soup sponge. <laughs> you, of all people, don't get to call anyone out for political gamesmanship, considering that before getting your ass handed to you by a screaming carrot demon, you were better known for trying to shut down the government with 21 hours of bedtime stories. And then through this page, he is simply holding green eggs and ham on a fork, preparing to bite them. That Sam I am, that Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. Well, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> Incidentally, this is how Cruz's daughters prefer to hear their bedtime stories from at least a room away. The Democrats wouldn't shut up until Republicans agreed to vote on two amendments. We need to close the terrorist loophole, and we need to make sure we're doing universal background checks. If you're wondering how those amendments are even controversial when 90% of Americans, including gun owners, want universal background checks, and 0% of Americans want terrorists to have guns, <laughs> then you must have been living under a rock, which is fine. That's a good place to hide from an active shooter. Stay there. While we talk about the powerful, paranoid lobby that dumped nearly $1 million into Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's re-election campaign. What do you get in exchange for that kind of scratch? Well, for starters, the world's most awkward lap dance. Distinguished service. Let's give a big hand to Tom Coburn. Nothing weird here, just two old guys fondling a rifle in Liberace's guest bathroom. <laughs> By the way, living on a prayer, isn't that a little on the nose? But you know, it didn't used to be this way. The party of Lincoln, named for the beloved president who died peacefully of natural causes at a ripe old age, wasn't always in the holster of big gun. Governor Ronald Reagan banned open carry in California as soon as the Black Panthers discovered it applied to them. Reagan's prejudice was vindicated years later when he was shot by noted Black Panther, John Hinckley Jr. <laughs> You have to give the Gipper credit. He pushed for an assault weapons ban, and in 91, he openly flipped off the NRA. I support the Brady Bill, and I urge the Congress to enact it. There's nothing like getting shot to put you on the side of gun control. So, at this rate, most Americans will come around in the next year or two. George H.W. Bush publicly quit the NRA because he was disappointed by their hateful, paranoid rhetoric. And keep in mind, this is Poppy Bush, a man who's developed a very high tolerance for disappointment. <laughs> Republican Supreme Court Justice Warren Burger had this to say about the NRA's Second Amendment absolutism. One of the greatest pieces of fraud, I repeat the word fraud, on the American public by special interest groups that I have ever seen in my lifetime. I never thought I'd say these words, but dear God, can you please raise the zombified corpse of Warren Burger and put him back on the Supreme Court? Oh, wait, I'm sorry, no, never mind. He'd never be confirmed by the pussies in this Senate. I can't imagine that a Republican majority in the United States Senate would want to confirm in a lame duck session a nominee opposed by the National Rifle Association. And I can't imagine that a leader of the Senate majority would admit to being a puppet of the NRA in a televised interview. Yet here you are with Crazy Wayne's fist so far up your party's ass, he can throw his talking points out your mouths. The politically correct policy of the White House, this political correctness in their philosophy and in their policies are getting people killed. Because of the political correctness, because of the ideology of this administration that won't even and say the word jihad. They look the other way. 
and the attacks go forward. Oh, yes, the deadly PC-15 political corrector. <laughs> Unmodified, it can fire 45 safe spaces a minute. Luckily, it only hurts straw men. By the way, fun fact, I'm sorry, I meant horrible fact. While the filibuster was going on, 48 people were shot in America, 12 of them fatally. We'll let you know when ISIS takes credit. You know, this being an Islamic terror problem and all. We'll be right back.